As he says, we believe in a human rights framework for development, and since 1986, when the United Nations adopted the Declaration of the Right to Development, this has been known. But what does that mean in practice? For decades, we've known that people must be at the center of their own development in order for it to be successful. Well, what does that mean? That means that when donors and other development actors want to assist people, that they engage them in a decision-making role in the planning and programming of the assistance intended to benefit them. Otherwise, it simply won't work. Imagine if you were given things that you hadn't asked for or had things made for you that you didn't need and then people wondered why you weren't using them. It's very simple. People must be in control of their own destiny and they must be able to do it with dignity. That's what we really mean by the right to development and by rights-based approaches. People have the right to enough food, they have the right to an education, they have the right to health services. And they do that by being empowered by the circumstances of development actors and the contexts so that they can claim their rights to these things. People have the right to claim their rights and that's what it, this is all about. So we're talking in development about economic and social rights, but people also have political rights. And until both their political rights are gained and their economic and social rights are gained, then development, proper development, effective development cannot really happen. So civil society groups work <clears throat> more closely with people's organizations and communities than any other actors. Government can't reach down far enough to communities to be very effective. So civil society organizations work very closely with people. But as MLA made reference to, what is happening in the recent past, actually since the Paris Declaration, is that governments are increasingly shrinking the space for civil society organizations to be able to operate effectively. So what does that mean? That means that they are increasingly denied the right to associate with one another, to have free speech, to organize, to raise funds, and the state's duty to protect is being neglected. So we call here in Busan, not only for a human rights framework and rights-based development, but we also call for governments to live up to the promise they made in Accra to promote an enabling environment. That is, to provide these rights to association, speech, uh, the ability to raise funding, etc. All of these rights that are already enshrined in existing regional and international agreements that governments have signed. As MLA said, we kept our promise since Accra in creating our own accountability mechanisms through our international framework. The governments, all of whom promised in Accra to promote an enabling environment, did not keep their promise, and that's what we're calling for now in Busan. Thank you.